In the most basic of terms, leukemia is when damaged blood cells take over the body and allow harmful invaders to do bad things. Almost like if an entire police force in a town all took LSD and all the criminals decided, well, there's, no, there's nothing to stop us. So they stop, they start robbing and destroying property. Now the body needs to make billions of blood cells to do work every day. These blood cells are created in the, the bone marrow of somebody, and there's three types. The first type of blood cell is a red one, and its job is to carry oxygen to various organs that need it and eliminate carbon dioxide. The second type are white blood cells, and their job is to fight invaders. They're like the police force. The last ones are platelets, and they enable blood to clot which helps someone not to bleed to death. So it's like a natural band-aid. Now with leukemia, a defect of a white blood cell known as a cancer cell is created. Instead of doing its job, it'd rather be all lazy and repel. So the body sends out the signal to kill itself, like, hey, just go kill yourself, we don't like you. And the, re the rebel cell goes, no way. So what he does, he starts making copies of himself. Now these copies continue to grow and expand and overcrowd all the normal healthy cells. They kind of like take over like a gang almost. And less blood cells are actually created because the body thinks it has enough, but has all these lazy gang members. Now say for example, some harmful virus or bacteria gets in the body. And the white blood cell is supposed to take care of it. But we got all these lazy gang members and what they do is they actually make friends with the virus or bacteria. And that harmful invader goes, well, this is great. This is a great place I just invaded. So he starts making copies of himself. And that's when uh, someone gets more likely, well, someone's more likely to get sick and ill because of it. Now, some of these symptoms, of course, is someone, if someone has leukemia, they're much more likely to get a fever. They're, they're going to have frequent coughing, probably. Runny nose, as well as a feeling of wanting to vomit, maybe some headache, stuff like that. Now, next, the cancer cells um, have not already been making copies of itself, but remember, it's overcrowded all the other cells, the red blood cells and the platelets, so the body doesn't have enough of those. Now, the red blood cells are supposed to carry oxygen to all these organs that need it, but there's not that many of them. So what that means is organs are not getting oxygen, and that means they're not going to be doing its job. Almost like if you were, had a hard time breathing, you wouldn't have a you would have a hard time doing a job anyways. This could also result in joint and muscle pain along with muscle weakness. Now these red blood cells also carry, uh, well, they provide color to the skin. So if somebody doesn't have enough of them, they're going to look like they're dead. Their skin's going to be all white colored. This is actually known as anemia. There's also not going to be enough platelets. And you know what this means? What happens then? Well, if you remember, platelets help clog up blood so someone doesn't bleed death. So if someone doesn't have enough of them, they're going to like bleed and bleed, continue to bleed all over the place. And it's not going to stop. Next, something known as bleeding in the skin may take place. This is when very small red dots appear in the skin on the lower legs. And they can also probably appear in other places as well, but that's where they're most common. Now, if someone has leukemia, the slightest and smallest injury can result in bruises. Now, bruises really appear when blood vessels break to an injury and blood leaks out of the, the vessel, resulting in this ugly look of a bruise. That's why it happens. Now, when, without enough of these platelets, someone could more easily experience blood in their urine, their feces, blood can come from their nose more frequently, come from their, their, their mouth, their, their gums can bleed. If it's really bad, bleeding can even occur in the brain. That's horrible. The lungs, the kidneys, all over the place. So, someone could, of course, die from this. Now, all these symptoms really depend on how fast the cancer cells are growing. 
if the cancer grows really, really fast, this actually might be good because someone's more likely to notice it and actually go and get treatment to stop it. If it starts very, very slowly, almost kind of like glaucoma, I don't even notice this with glaucoma, but if it's really slow, someone's peripheral vision starts getting very, very tiny and they don't even notice it. By the time they do realize it, they're like, they lost all its vision, they can't get it back. So that's why sometimes it's better if it's quickly, so someone can notice it. Now one great way to detect leukemia and stop it before the growth gets all out of hand would be to get routine checkups with a physician. Now if you're over the age of 50, you should probably get it every year. If you're beneath 50, an adult, it should be every like two or three years. Some other ideas on how to reduce the chance of getting leukemia would be not to smoke. Uh, not eating trans fats because trans fats get used in cell membranes instead of the regular fats and they're weaker and it damages cells. And damaged cells leads to cancer. And of course getting all of the vitamins you need. Uh, there are a few vitamins like folic acid that really have to do with a cell's health and replicating a cell. In fact if a woman does, doesn't get enough folic acid she really increases her chance of, of, of a birth defect by I think it's like 70 or 80 percent or something. Some huge number. Now, I highly recommend a good multivitamin simply because a lot of our food doesn't have the nutrients like it used to. Now, some other ideas you can do would, of course, be to boost up your immune system. If someone has a weak immune system, they're going to have a hard time eliminating foreign cells. Uh, you could do this by uh, getting plenty of rest, not getting stressed out, eating healthy, of course, uh, drinking green tea. There's a lot of various herbs you can take to boost somebody's immune system up. Now if you're really interested in supplements in general and herbal remedies and what they could do to you to your, in your health, I strongly recommend viewing a free guide I created all about this topic. The reality is that dietary supplements are not really regulated by a lot of government agencies like the FDA in the United States. What this means is it's easy for companies to make crummy crappy products out there and only when start, people start getting sick they, they get recalled. And sometimes that doesn't even happen. For example, in the last eight years, over 237 dietary supplements in the United States alone were recalled for, for being dangerous and toxic and harmful to people. What's even worse is that 110 dietary supplements that were known to be harmful were not even recalled. So there's a lot of crappy products out there. Now, due to this, I actually uh, sat down and actually created a, somewhat of a guide that can kind of help somebody in the process of buying and choosing dietary supplements. Picking good products from bad, horrible products. It also, it also goes over, of course, herbal remedies. It goes over what to take for certain conditions, doses amounts, the roles of government agencies, which is pretty interesting. And the best part is they're completely free. So you really have no excuse not to at least take a glance at it. And you can do that by simply clicking on the link right below this video. Thank you so much for your time. I wish you the best and take care of yourself.